Now, carrying on straight on to FTP, why does funds transfer pricing need to address liquidity risk? In other words, why is it that FTP is part of a liquidity risk management framework? The main reason is because we have to ensure that when we price loans and deposits for customers, that pricing incorporates an element of our liquidity risk exposure, what I like to call our term liquidity premium. And I'll come to that in a great bit more detail later on. Because we want to ensure, well, actually, let's take one step back. Why do we want to ensure that we address liquidity risk exposure in our pricing? It's because we can't be sure what our term liquidity premium is going to be in the future. And this chart shows the spread between three-month LIBOR and overnight interest rate for US dollars. So the chart is the spread between three-month US dollar reference rate and the overnight US dollar reference rate. In fact, if you look at this chart for the same period, which is 2002 to 2010, it looks pretty much the same for sterling and euros. And what the chart is showing is the illiquidity in the money markets that arose after the on the on the on the onset of the bank crash of 2007 2008 and that illiquidity went on into the first quarter of 2009 as well now this blowout if that funding spread of that three months overnight spread basically shows what the funding costs what happened to the funding costs of banks and their ability to raise funding beyond overnight as well as the market became illiquid it was harder for banks to raise funding certainly in the wholesale markets beyond the overnight and it's just this exposure that we want to that we are addressing when we have a funds transfer pricing mechanism to to ensure that liquidity risk exposure our term liquidity premium exposure is incorporated in our customer pricing that's the rationale for ftp okay so what should the objectives of an ftp process be Remember I said at the start, FTP is part of the liquidity risk management framework in a bank. If you remember from lecture two, when I showed you early on in that lecture, components of the liquidity risk management framework in a bank, one of those boxes was FTP. And to me, that is first and foremost what FTP is. It's part of the liquidity risk management framework of a bank. So therefore, that means its primary objective is the first bullet point there, consistent liquidity pricing behavior amongst business lines. And by definition, for what that first bullet point is saying is we incorporate liquidity risk in our pricing for customers. So business lines need, may need to be aware of this cost and this cost quoted to them before they go out and quote customer pricing. Another objective is to remove interest rate risk in from business lines and centralize them and indeed liquidity risk as well liquidity and funding risk that second bullet point really should say removing liquidity funding and interest rate risk from the business lines and centralizing within the bank's treasury or asset liability management function the third bullet point is related to the first bullet point to include the cost of liquidity the fourth bullet point is the incentivization point which is is common but not necessarily obligatory there may be other ways to incentivize business behavior and then the fifth one is related to points one and three correct or bullet points one and three correct internal pricing regime for the bank there is another objective that i'm going to come to later as well to do with p and attribution profit and loss reporting for business lines <clears throat> which is in the next slide as well we want to ensure that there is if you look at the penultimate bullet point we want to ensure that there is accurate and genuine P&L attribution, SVA, shareholder value added, by each business line. In fact, in, in other words, business lines shouldn't be demonstrating an element of their profit and loss that is generated by simply riding the yield curve. In other words, getting a funding cost to it, if I'm in the lending side, that is based on very short-term funding costs and lending very long-term, and that difference in spread as opposed to any business line expertise like credit risk expertise being part of that business lines PL. We want the PL being attributed to each business line to reflect their value add as customer relationship experts and not riding the yield curve. So uh, a fit for purpose FTP mechanism should help to ensure that. And finally, I've got at the bottom, if desired, allocate the cost of HQLA. HQLA, high quality liquid asset portfolio. In other words, the cost of running the bank's liquid asset buffer should be incorporated within the FTP pricing to ensure that it's allocated out 
to business lines and they cover for it in their pricing. However, I'll just let you think about that for a minute. There is more than one way to cover the cost of liquid asset buffer to incorporate that cost into the business lines. You don't have to do it through the FTP framework.